Hi guys, today we're going to do a clone of Flappy Bird, a um, very basic one, um, based on FXGL. If you didn't do the previous tutorial, then go to that tutorial and do that instead, because we will need the FXGL setup that we'll be using uh, for today. And after you've done that, you can um, then follow this tutorial. So first of all, in your um, tutorials project, create a package for this tutorial, which is tutorial 19. Then um, in your um, source code folder, which by default should say SRC, create a folder, just right click on the folder um, SRC and then create new one. Um, yeah, just like that. And name it assets. Um, this is where FXGL will be loading resources from. Uh, make sure you get the spelling correctly. It's A W -S, S E T S. Um, and then within the assets folder, you will need to um, again right click and create a new folder um, audio and textures. Textures is where our um, images will um, be located, and audio is. Um, dot wav files which are played as <clears throat> which are basically audio files um, I've got two files here um, which says should this is the should uh, the audio file in bird PNG which we'll be using for today and um, you can use whatever you want really and then place your audio file under the audio folder and um, your texture or your image um, under the textures folder. Once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. Um, create an app within the package for this tutorial called, um, doesn't really matter, call it effects bird app. Um, these are the imports that we'll be using today. So you might as well um, copyright uh, copy them right now as stated in the previous tutorial we will now be extending game application as opposed to um, JavaFX application and these are the things or these are the fields that we'll be using um, today so you're you should be familiar with properties already so that's an integer property score and boolean property running uh, we said by default to true because we'll need to pass that to something else um, in a second then we'll have our randomizer which gives us random numbers and our player so the player is going to be the bird that we'll control and every game object in FXGL is represented by an entity um, and we're passing the player as the type um, make sure you get the spelling correctly um, as long as you use the same spelling here and um, in collision detection module this should be alright texture is our image uh, and texture extends um, image view of JavaFX so you get all the um, all the methods all the methods from there and you have audio clip so um, you get it from JawFX um, Media, which is the short clip um, that we're going to play. All right, in in its settings, um, we don't set width and height. Um, by default, they'll be eight hundred by six hundred. We just set the title to FX Bird App and version one point zero. You can set it to whatever you want doesn't really matter. Um, these are the settings that affect um, the window or the window frame. Um, our um, entry point to the program uh, polystatic void main launch arcs as always. Um, then we have yeah let's do an end game. So as you can see we only created references to our texture and audio clip well, we didn't actually initialize them, so we're going to do that um, as the first thing in our uh, init game method. These are the methods that you, you override from game application. 
texture bird. So whenever you want to load anything, um, just use Asset Manager. It can currently load textures, audio, uh, music. Music is basically MP3 files, which are which tend to be longer than just audio clips, and typically used as um, like background music stuff. Uh, you can also save and load your custom um, format files. We'll cover this in separate tutorial. Uh, and that's pretty much it for now. I'm not sure if you would want to load anything else. Um, but you have, if you have any ideas, and just um, post them, and I'll see what I can, I can do with the FXGL texture bird um, set with uh, so. It's basically the width of the resulting image because initial image is quite big actually um, just um, shrink it to 30 and 30 um, high and uh, wide audio should um, load audio oh yeah by the way you do not put the whole uh, path here just the name of the file and if you place them correctly you will automatically find it um, in correct folders if not, it will throw an exception, um, which we, which we catch here. So if you, uh, when you run the program, oh, actually, first of all, let me just run the thing, and you'll see how it looks. So this is what we have. Um, it is similar to Floppy Bird, I suppose, um, in some ways. Um, you have our your texture, your which is basically an image, and then sound if you can hear it. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for this um, game. So yeah, if um, something happens during your resource loading, then this should uh, catch the exception and then say it failed to load resources and stuff. And then print, print the stack trace so you can see where exactly it went wrong and then exit the application. Whenever you want to um, exit your game sort of so that it cleans up um, everything it needs, um, then call exit method, which we inherit from game application. Then we'll have to place our entity, which is the zero zero, um, the initial coordinates, the origin. Um, set use physics so that we can do collision detection. Um, set it to true. Um, graphics. We are setting the texture of bird as the graphics for the player. And finally, add that to the list of entities um, for the root node. So just call add entities. Now. This thing here is our wall creation or obstacle creation. Um, we have a loop that runs 100 times and we obtain a random height for each wall, which is in the range between 0 and 300. Um, 300 excluding, I think. Yeah, it is exclusive. Um, so the maximum is going to be 299. We create first entity or first wall um, name it wall um, or the type then set translate x um, push it by 700 so this is the initial um, translation and then add to that um, i multiplied by 200 and this is the distance between each wall or um, yeah among them so translate y0, use physics for collision detection um, set graphics just a rectangle of width 20 and height the one that we generated randomly and this is the second part of the wall or the, um, lo the lower part again it's pretty much the same thing translate we don't um, change anything except for translate y this is we um, start at 300 and then add the height of um, the first wall so that there is always a 300 um, sort of hole between two walls uh, for the player to pass again set physics um, graphics same thing um, the rectangle with uh, uh, with 20 but the height is 300 minus the height so that we um, don't create very um, large obstacles or very high obstacles for that matter 
uh, and then finally add entities, both of them, to the uh, list of entities, wall and wall2. These two methods allow us to do um, keyboard, um, to control our player using keyboard. Add key press binding and uh, add key type binding are the two methods that you use if you want to have um, control over keyboard. So um, this is the method, um, this is the runnable method that will be called when um, this key is pressed and is being um, pressed currently. So it's being held, or is being held, sorry. Uh, player translate um, zero, this is the x coordinate, so you translate, um, basically you don't move him um, horizontally, only vertically, and minus four means um, the player will go up when you press the um, key, uh, double key. Add key type is only called once per actual physical click or physical key press because we don't want the audio playing constantly as the key is pressed so we just play it once um, at the first press of the key uh, and then we have our collision section or rather um, collision handler we specify the types of entities we want um, to be able to collide so that's player and wall and the way you specify here, so if the player type uh, comes first, then it will be sent as the first object, and vice versa. So now we get um, our player and wall in this lambda function, or lambda method. That means that there is a collision between the two, and we need to do something. So we set the score to... Um, we basically uh, subtract a thousand from the score. We place the player um, at the origin, zero, zero. And then we set the viewport origin to zero, zero. Um, viewport origin is the thing that you can um, see. This is sort of the rectangle that you're able to see um, as a projection of the game, if that makes sense. So as the player moves the viewport also moves because you can see larger distances so here basically the viewport follows the player more or less and we do that um, on update which we'll um, come to in a second so the last thing in initializing uh, in game initialization is um, run at interval while um, again this is the function, uh, the method that comes from game application. Uh, you set score, you increase the score by a hundred every two seconds uh, while the game is running. So um, the constant second uh, comes from again game application. It'll, um, it is um, a second in nanoseconds. So pretty much everything is, um, everything uses the um, nanoseconds representation uh, of time which is um, really easy because um, the internal representation of time in JavaFX also um, in nanoseconds so you can easily do things like 2 multiplied by second um, 0 0.5 that will mean half a second and all kind of things Um, init user interface, what we have here is basically our text score, new text, um, this is JavaFX text, JavaFX scene text. Translate X and Y to 700 and 100, um, set color to blue, and then uh, bind the text property of um, this UI element to score, so that when the score changes, and um, score is our integer property, here. So when it changes, um, it will automatically update um, that UI element. And finally add that to the list of children of the UI root. Um, UI root is independent from the game root. Um, it's done in this particular way because when you change the viewport of um, 
actually I don't really have it running. When you change the viewport of the game root, the UI root stays the same. So anything in the UI root will always be visible um, to the player. As you can see, the thing, um, the score doesn't um, doesn't change in, in its position compared to a uh, relative to player. It always stays at this exact um, coordinate. This is the update tick um, of our game loop, which is very simple. We move the player by four um, units in um, um, x coordinate and two units in y coordinate, two units down basically. So it kind of simulates gravity. And we set viewport origin to player get translate x minus 300, which places the viewport slightly behind, actually not slightly, pretty much halfway um, behind the player, so that you can see um, before the player and after the player um, the areas. And this is how we sort of make the camera move um, along with the player or with any entity you want. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, um, and thank you for watching.